All right, everyone, we'll go ahead and start. I think we still have some people that are falling in, but we'll, um, we'll have them catch up. We can get you all updated and get you enjoy the rest of your evening. Um, again, I want to introduce myself for those that don't know who I am. I'm Walter Slayton with Stream Realty here, responsible for both leasing as well as property management here at Pittsburgh Yard. Um, as well, my colleague, Michelle Jones, which I don't see that she's on the call yet, as well is here um, as the community manager. Um, we are well, your main point of contact here at Pittsburgh Yards. Um, and for those that don't know, or this is your first meeting, just want to talk about Pittsburgh Yards is the main incubator space in Southwest Atlanta, providing over 60,000 square feet of entrepreneurial space for the communities primarily um, impacted in the areas of MPUV, which includes People Towns, People's Town, particularly in directly Pittsburgh, Pe uh, Mechanicsville, Capital Gateway, Adair Park, and also Summer Hill. Um, this is a one in a lifetime chance in terms of having um, commercial space on the Beltline in Southwest Atlanta, Southwest Atlanta with close proximity to many amenities to 7585, to Metropolitan, to the Beltline, as I mentioned before, as we actually sit adjacent to the Beltline. Um, all of that is provided within a, an area of about 15 acres that have been developed with a full 30 acres or so that is yet to be developed. Um, in a building that has about 101 um, office spaces that are ready for uh, small business and entrepreneurs to take advantage of. Um, we have been very uh, up, to, uh, uh, up front in terms of trying to make sure that we make sure that we take seriously um, that we are still in a pandemic. Um, so we are taking certain precautions as it relates to COVID um, we do always want to make sure that we keep each you know, mindful when entering the building that you are wearing a mask and making sure that you are uh, taking into account of all the uh, social distancing protocols. Uh, we do have hand sanitizing stations at all of the entry points in the building. And we um, will we'll soon have uh, hand sanitizing um, pumps in all of the, uh, the meeting rooms and the common areas as well. Um, we also are mindful as well as we begin to start um, to have our co-working members start to enter the building to make sure that um, they are also wearing masks and having uh, hand sanitizer uh, stations at, at the majority of the um, spaces that will be in our main um, areas in the, the near building. Um, I um, wanted to make sure also that um, if you have um, a tour the building and you have had an opportunity to tour the space, if you haven't seen some of the, the latest updates or if, it's, if, you, if you're a uh, individual that's toured the building probably during the construction phase, we are completely uh, done with construction now. I know some have uh, expressed uh, concerns or I've received some e emails and looking for updates in terms of the status of the building. The NEO building is complete. We are um, um, taking tenants uh, actively as well as the co-working co members as well. Um, kind of wanted to show some recent photos that I've taken. Um, just give me a second to share my screen and hopefully I can do this at the same time and host the meeting, hopefully. So hopefully you all can see my screen. <laughs> These are some recent photos of the, um, of the uh, NEO building. We recently had our interior design team um, install what are shipping container parts and those are actually um, CD spaces that our co-working members, as well as our tenants, that will be able to use for meeting areas, as well as uh, kind of an area to hang out or as a work area as well. And in front of those areas, this is on the top side of the amphitheater area, you also will see 
um, where we have um, added a little bit more fluffiness in terms of pillows along the uh, staircase that leads up to the top portion of the amphitheater. And you can see we've had a, a couple of our, our guests kind of test out the facilities and it looks like it's uh, kid approved. <laughs> <laughs> Just a couple more photos that we have. All right. So what I wanted to do tonight, um, as we always do every month, if I always like to have, and I see a couple of uh, my um, my favorite uh, tenants, particularly <laughs> one of my tenants. Well, I guess there's probably there's a uh, there's kind of a race in terms of the tenants that um, that either I bother the most or they bother me the most. I don't know, but uh, <laughs> but um, I see Miss uh, Mary Gay there, and Miss Mary Gay, I want to introduce her with uh, virtual staffing. Um, she recently picked up her keys and. Um, it's probably one of our, you know, our, our first tenants to sign up and one of our most intense tenants. And we're so glad <laughs> to have her in the building and on the meeting tonight. Ms. Gay, are you able to speak? I'm always able to speak. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hey. Hey. <laughs> what you want me to speak about? <laughs> I just wanted to speak about basically um, yeah, moving in on the fact that you got the keys now, just kind of your experience. I know you're still kind of in the moving in process, but just kind of wanted you to give your experience as a, as a new. Oh yeah, it was just um, a, a great experiment. And since you hadn't paid me for the last time, Walter, oh. I'm not going to praise your customer service, oh. but I will talk about Michelle's customer service. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Duly noted. Wow, I love it. I love her already. Duly noted. Duly noted. <laughs> but it was a great, it's been great. Um, I got my keys. You gave me the tour. I know where my mailbox is and I don't have to bend down to get my mail, which is exciting for me. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm in. I'm, I moved in. I just need to move chairs in. I got my desk in. I have a, a standing desk that I'm moving in. Um, Everything works, it's, and I and I like that. Um, I had an issue with my key, but I gave Walter the key. He called me back maybe next two days, and everything was resolved. Um, I don't even know what to say. I'm I'm, I'm back excited again. COVID tried <laughs> to make me depressed about this, but it can't do it. Can't do it. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm just ready to open my doors. I I gave out my address today. So I'm excited about that. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't even know. It's just been a great experience. And I, oh, and I got my welcome bag, um, which was exciting too. Good, <laughs> so, good. yeah. Good to hear. Uh, I just need y'all to put in a little outdoor furniture so oh. I can come bring people over there and... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, the interior design team is working on that, as I understand. So there will be outdoor furniture around the perimeter, on the uh, terrace level, on the south porch. So, so that's all. That all is coming. Okay. Well, like, yeah, I'm just excited. I'm glad I made this decision. I'm glad this will be our first office, and I'm I'm believing for it. And I'm knocking on wood. Um, and I'm just excited about being in Pittsburgh Yard and and opening my doors. For the staffing agency. Good, good, good. good, good. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> and your check is in the mail somewhere. Yeah, okay, appreciate it. Just put two. Oh, because your address, you can change your address here. That's what happened. So it's, it got. Oh, okay. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> so if anybody else on here is moving in, please say something in chat because I want to meet you and talk to you. We have a couple of others on tonight, Ms. Gay. We'll um, actually we'll move on to because I see Ms. Alima Albari also with the Atlanta Youth Film Festival, so I actually jump on the call as well. 
kind of talk about her experience and just kind of her um, her time, because she's probably been in the building the longest as an active tenant. So, Alima, okay. take it away. Hey, guys, I'm Alima Alvary, and I actually, um, I just love the building. I buzz Walter a lot, lot, lot. <laughs> Because every time I bring one person in the building, they're like, can I get an office or can I have an event here? Um, so we absolutely love the space. Um, the parents of the kids love the space when we do our talent workshops. Uh, when we have the models come through, they all take selfies on the lovely uh, furniture you just showed us. They take so many pictures and they're just ecstatic to be here. So we love the space. We love the flexibility, like being able to come um, 24 hours around the clock is amazing. And just being able to be in a space where it feels so good. So that's my favorite thing about it. Wow, that's, that's profound. Cause I think one of the, the main touch points for you was concerned about, about access from where you previously were. So I think that's kind of one of the, kind of one of those things that set us aside from other places is being able to have accessible, accessibility to the place Regardless yeah. of time. Definitely. Um, at the previous place I was at, it was just no accessibility and constantly being like locked out of the gate or, you know, just having to call to get in the door and it, it was just not good or conducive for business. So this has definitely opened it up and every single client we have has is just raised about it. They're like, this is much better than where you were. Like, you should never move. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I won't. So we're excited. we're excited. Well, that's good to hear. I don't know if the people that want your space would like to hear that because you have a couple of people that are interested in that, that larger space you have. So <laughs> that may be bad news for them if you never leave. So I'm not never leaving. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for that, Alina. Thank you. All right. And we're also, we have another tenant that we have on the call that I asked to kind of speak to their experience here. And that is, I think I see both Miss Keisha Hunt and Mr. Eric Hunt, they're recently moved in as well with uh, Meta Solutions. If you don't mind, just kind of give us just kind of brief introduction as well. Just kind of speak to your experience here at Pittsburgh Yard. Sure, I hope you guys can hear me. We have, and we're putting together furniture in our office. So I apologize if there's noise, but hi, it's nice to meet you all. Um, we moved in, or we started our lease actually this month. And so it's only been about three weeks, but we found the location probably November, December last year in 2020, literally just driving by because I used to live in this neighborhood in um, Lakewood Heights about seven or eight years ago. And so I, I try to come down here and see what's going on, you know, because I, I love this area and it's, there's always something new happening in Atlanta. And we drove by and we're like, what is that? Um, we need to figure out what it is. And so we contacted Walter. I'm also a tenant who harasses Walter. Um, <laughs> so I, um, I, I'll be rivaling everybody else. We bug him all the time and him and Michelle. And uh, once we got here and saw the space and understood kind of the history of it and the connection to the foundation and the location and the belt line, um, we just got really excited. This is our second office location. Um, we're in federal contracting. And so our, our primary office is up in Brookhaven, but then we wanted to have something that's, you know, on the South side, that's really in our neighborhood um, to connect for some of our staff. And so um, this is, probably where the leadership team will meet more frequently, but we also are hoping to get some of our staff to be able to come here and do some, you know, remote work or things like that. Um, I love it. It's great. I think one of the things that we don't have in our other office is someone to just troubleshoot. And so if we need a key, we need a key fob, we need a conference room, or I just have a thousand questions, Michelle and Walter always answer them. And I think that's really just a benefit to be able to have someone like help you out with things that you may need when you're in your office. Um, and it's just been a great experience. It's really beautiful here. It's big. And so we're just grateful to be here, excited to meet everybody. We're on the north side. Um, so just come by anytime. We'll be looking forward to meeting all of you. Aww. Nice to meet you. Thank you for that, Ms. Keisha. 
Uh oh, I see Mary already starting the competition for her Ras Walter campaign. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> and Walter, I thought I was like the worst person harassing you now that everyone says they do. I don't feel bad anymore. Oh, you shouldn't. You shouldn't feel bad at all. No, <laughs> no you're fine. <laughs> All right, thanks for that, y'all. Really appreciate you guys uh, making those comments. And, that, and that's just really just to kind of let those that are on the call and for those that will be seeing the video kind of get a feel for the, the difference between Pittsburgh Yards and other spaces and just the experience that you have and some of the reasons why, you know, you chose this place over another place or in addition to another space that you're currently located. Um, with that, we'll move on to... Um, the, my um, great colleague that some of you have already alluded to, Ms. Michelle Jones, and we'll have her um, give us an update on the latest with the uh, Engraved Brick Program. Some of you probably have seen um, some of that paraphernalia in the office where we have the ability for you to have your engraved brick along the, the portions of the area near the Beltline, I think the area near University Ave, those spaces are already taken. So there will be a, a new group that will be available to have installations near the Beltline. So Michelle will be able to give you more information about that. Uh, take it away, Michelle. All right, how's everyone? Hey. Hey, good, 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 good. So apologize if my grandchildren chime in while I'm talking, but uh, yes, the brick project was started uh, almost two years ago, and so it's an opportunity for people to have their business um, engraved for a lifetime on a trail that connects the Pittsburgh neighborhood with the Beltline um, that's under development, and our next installation will be this summer about a month before the Beltline opens. So um, people are buy, you know, buying commemorative bricks um, for family members, some buying for the high school students, class of you know, 2020. Um, people that bought their first house are buying them and saying that their family was established uh, maybe after they got married. And so just lots of different reasons. And the miniature bricks are also a good, um, token to take away and keep at your desk on your office. So thank you for all of those who've been supporting the project so far. Um, but it's under, you can purchase them by going to pittsburghyards.com and on the community tab to learn more. Thank you. Price is $50 for the engraved ones and then $20 for the miniatures. All right. Thanks for that. And is it, does anyone have any questions about the, the BRIC program? Michelle Can you just repeat what? Okay. Sorry. Can you repeat what it benefits? Oh, okay. Yes, absolutely. So we are a nonprofit organization, and there's nine other volunteers. We have a board, a four person board. But the proceeds, we will be purchasing um, like a 10 foot double sided clock. Uh, four benches, four trash receptacles. Um, we'll have two lighted entrance signs, and then we'll also commission um, a local artist to design those entrance signs, as well as um, we'll have local artists design four works of art that depict the Pittsburgh neighborhood. Those That artwork will go on the back of the um, benches and further down the road, once we have those outdoor design elements on the trail, then we will um, then we will uh, use the funds for programming, like say supporting a Girl Scout troop um, that uh, maybe the neighborhood can't afford the association. So the proceeds would be used to start um, help a troop get started, um, different things like that, supporting high schools and senior centers. So that's not fully developed, but the team of volunteers, you know, are coming up with ideals when we get to that point of how we could give back to the community and then um, be uh, 
visually so that the Pittsburgh Yards neighborhood would see, say, a Boy Scout troop doing different type of leadership programs in the neighborhood. Any more questions? Thank you. That's a good question. All right. I don't think there's any more questions. If not, we'll move on. Or if you do have questions, you can always uh, post your comments or questions in the chat. Uh, we'll move on. I see Mr. Banks wanted to have him up on the call as well. Well, it's an update as it relates to the farmer's market. How you doing today, I'm Mr. Doing Trump? good. How's everybody doing tonight? Um, yeah. First, I want to start off um, with talking about, uh, I guess, the farmer's market, what's been going on lately. Um, we've been working on funding. We've also been working on, on um, like, what do we want to see out of the market? So we are really leaning more towards having an artisan market more than a uh, like a tr traditional farmer's market. And I believe that will create more chances for uh, entrepreneurs outside of just having uh, like vegetable uh, producers or growers there. Uh, so we're really thinking about having more so more makers, people that make, it could be anything from clothes to shoes to film to just different different types of makers so we're still working on just different ways to support those makers and um like what the market year one will look like and what's all going to be incorporated in that and um right now we're just working on getting back to the work that we were doing pre-covid that's a lot of canvassing marketing getting people back involved with uh the marketing also um there's, there's been kind of a um I don't know if it's a technical error with the with the website but the request that were I, I did one personally just to see on our website you can go and, and fill out a form but the forms aren't reaching the email the email address so if you did um send in uh interest to pittsburghcommunitymarket.org go ahead and send an email to uh, Pittsburgh community market at gmail.com. And we'll, we're working on also streamlining the, uh, the application. It's, it's kind of a long lengthy application, but it was more catered towards uh, farmers. And it's a lot more you had to do as a farmer with produce than an actual maker. So we are asking people who are going to be making like food, to at least have some type of insurance. And it's just a lot of things we're working on. So if you want to be a part of the market, help brainstorm some of these ideas and uh, get everything ready for the, the opening of it, which we don't have an official opening date yet, um, just give me an email or I'll put my contact information in the, um, in the comments and we can get to work. Anybody have any questions, comments? There are two questions in the chat. Okay. Let's see if I can see the chat. Uh, will there still be produce at the moment? There will be. There definitely will be produce. But what what um kind of separates a farmer's market from an artisan market is a farmer's market has to have a certain percent of producers. Like it's more producers than makers. And I, we feel like having more makers now would benefit the neighborhood more because there are more people that make things as opposed to um, maybe growing different types of vegetables. So to offer uh, entrepreneurs more connectivity, especially when um, the belt line opens. And the second question is, uh, are there few fresh food options nearby so that that would still be of interest. Are there few fresh food options nearby? So that would still be. Whoever wrote that question can kind of explain the question. I think that's from, from Anthony. It sounds like they're from what they're trying to say is that basically that there's still few options for fresh food in the area. So that I guess they were more or less saying that the, uh, the farmer's market option should probably still be something 
that's our focus. Right, definitely, definitely not leaving food out of out of the conversation. It's definitely needs for food, but when we're dealing with a community like Pittsburgh, there are a lot of things that need to be addressed, and food is definitely one of them. We also have um, people that need to be inspired. People need to, that need to make more money. We need people to be uh, connected to this uh, project and just be able to see some kind of income out of it. So it's definitely, um, we definitely need food options, but like I said, there are a lot more issues than food, you know? Um, so we're gonna try to handle all, all of these, all of these, uh, I, I wanna say problems, but yeah, just solving different problems that, that the area has. And it's a lot of different things. So um, our main goal is to help entrepreneurs scale and uh, just have them have some kind of connectivity to the Beltline. Are there any other any other questions? All right, I think that's it for you, Tron. But I, I'll just kind of piggyback on, on your last comment um, that you said that what I think is one of the good things about Pittsburgh Yards is that the fact that the, the things that you're looking to do or that are needs for the Pittsburgh community, I think is a direct correlation to what is happening within the NIA building. Some of the services, if not all of them, can be approached and be assisted with the tenants that we see that are coming to the, into the building, whether that be non-profit organizations, whether that be um, businesses that are associated in the county. We've got some tax tenants coming in. We got tenants that are coming in that are in the, uh, um, the marketing space, within the entertainment space. So we're talking about job creation. We're also talking about folks that would be on the uh, CPA side. So even if you're talking about a business that needs help, with being set it up, set up with the, your business designation, whether that be an LLC, um, wraparound services for some of the uh, tenants that we have that will be providing social services as well, like Fathers Incorporated. We have a, a lot of services, particularly around some of the needs of the community that are actual tenants in the building. So one of the, the good things that I just saw, even within the uh, chat cycle, we have uh, tenants that are communicating connecting and hopefully out of that synergies are happening within the, in the, within the building. Any, any other comments about anything we spoke about so far? Any other comments with Tron? If so, um, as I said before, definitely put your comments in the, uh, the chat and we will try to follow up with those as, as they come in. Um, Having said that, we'll move on to the, the next portion of the meeting. I wanted to give as much as an update as I could in reference to the uh, shipping container site. Uh, Mr. Tony Atler couldn't be on the call tonight because he was double booked on another meeting. But I will say from what he told me in both email and a conversation is that there are currently two slots left um, I do see one of the um, the vendors on the call, and I wasn't sure whether um, Mr. Ken, if you would want to give us an update just from a perspective as a potential vendor in terms of where you all are in the process. <laughs> are you there, Ken? Or Jeanette, or whoever it is. Uh-oh, I think it's coming. How's it going, Ken? I don't think this is working. Can you hear me? We can hear you, but you're just very, very low, your sound. How about now? We can hear you. You're still kind of low, but we can hear you. We definitely can see you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are we are working through plans on scaling the all the uh, there we go uh, containers. Oh. Received we received plans this week, and we also got the permitting person in place so that the food service containers will be available 
as soon as possible when the container park actually opens. Don't hear you. Walter, you're on mute. I apologize. I, you would think I would know as many as Zoom calls has been on yet not to do that, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think the timeline is still, is, is it still that July touchdown uh, time? July, July, yep, absolutely. Okay, awesome, awesome. So if, if my, my fingers are crossed and my toes, if that sinks in, in the same timeline in, in where the uh, the Beltline Southside Trail will be opening, that'll, that'll definitely be awesome for that to come online. Yep. All right. Anything, anything, anything else you want to add to that, Ken? We look forward to getting down there more often, daily. Yeah, I need you to come see me. I, I need to come see you guys too. Yeah, come by and visit. We'll come down there. <laughs> All right, thanks for that, Ken. He didn't introduce the young lady behind him. And this is the, the woman in charge. That's right, Mary, you know that. <laughs> Jeanette's been sick. She's got some kind of tooth thing going on. It's been brutal, but she is toughing it out for this meeting. <laughs> I thought she was just social distancing from you or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's what married life is all about, Walter. <laughs> Wishing you health, Jeanette. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> all right, thanks, guys. There is one question in the chat. Um, you see that, Walter, about the. Uh, yes, I can. Either do do you all want me to send you the images or or no, I want you to present so I can step in and talk about how excited that I'm moving in oh, when you're well, there present. Well, just send me a request. That's all. I, yeah, okay. I try. I try to attend. I haven't attend, attended all of the neighborhood meetings, but I usually try to at least attend the EPU V meeting. I have. I didn't attend the last one, but I try to get to those. Um, so yes, yeah, just let me know the time. I can be there. I'll, I'll harass you. No, oh, goodness. I should have. <laughs> <you. laughs> Any other questions? Uh, past sites, as I understand, there has been some inquiries, but we don't have any definite uh, movement on the past sites. For those that, that don't know, the question was, has there been any interest in the past sites? So we have about five past sites, and that's actually been uh, managed by another broker, Mr. Michael Todd with uh, Red Rock Global is managing that, that um, at those past sites. As I understand, there's been some interest, but we haven't had anything solid yet that we could present. Any other questions? Because actually this is a great segue because I'm at the section where we just get into property management updates, as well as the uh, management updates. And um, at this point, if you have any questions, because basically what I was going to get into is just basically if anyone had any questions, if you're interested in leasing spaces or in reference to touring, the touring are scheduled tours on Thursdays. They run from about 10.30 to about 3.30-ish or so. Um, we have kind of reduced the size of the tours just because we want to make sure that we're um, appropriately addressing um, large groups. So please, if you haven't done a tour, especially especially if you haven't done a tour since construction, um, it'd be great for you to do a tour just to see how the building has changed and the updates that have completed. Um, also with that, I want to say all of you that have that I haven't reached out and you should have received an email from me in reference to co-working. I know some of you um, responded, some didn't, but co-working is open now. So you can um, apply for a co-working membership. And for those that don't understand or are familiar with co-working uh, process, what that provides is access to the building. Um, co-working is an option to kind of give you the um, access to the, the main portion of the near building as well as the, the north wing. Uh, there will also be a business center that you'll have access to that provide copy, printer, scanning options. And it's also a, uh, a conference room on the north in the north wing that you would be able to access as well. So if you are interested in co-working opportunities, 
Um, definitely shoot me an email. I'll put, before the meeting is over, I'll put my email contact information in the chat. Um, and if you receive my email about uh, basically coming in to pick up an application, or if you, if you are unable to come by and you want to receive an application to fill out, um, we do have a, uh, a, a edible version of the application that we can send out to you as well. Um, I do see a couple of questions. So uh, someone's asking about the, the, I guess the gap between the doors and the visibility from, is that, are you asking about, Lisa, are you asking just about the, the distance from the entry point to the restroom area? No, I'm asking about uh, the gap between the doors. So as you walk through the bathroom and you look uh, toward the doors, you can clearly see who would be inside the stall. And so I was asking if that could be fixed. I, well, it can be, I guess I can, what I can do is I can reach out to the development team, particularly the architect to see if there's something they can do to address that. Thanks for bringing that up, actually. Okay, thank you. Yep. Any other questions? I also asked if the, uh, when the co-working membership contracts will be sent out. You should have received, you should have received yours especially, Lisa. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. haven't received it, but um, I'll check my spam, maybe it's in there. Yeah, you should have received, I, I know your name very well. Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and Lisa, the email also would come from um, yeah. Impact Solutions, and another one would be from, What's the other one? Is it Screen Realty? It'll, be or... screen, it'll come from Screen Realty because so the email that comes out is. A... Oh my God! Yes. Okay. 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 Yeah, I did get that email, but I deleted it. I thought it was spam. Oh, see that? See, Lisa. No. <laughs> I'll do it now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Michelle. No problem. You're welcome. Any other questions? And we also provide IT services. So if you delete emails by mistake, we can assist with that as well. <laughs> any, any other questions? All right, you all, that's all that I have. Uh, and I'll do one more glance at the chat. I don't see any other questions. I will quickly put my... Oh, I see Mr. Quentin is asking the question about co-working as well as renting. Is that just a generic question about availability or just about whether, which option? No, it's, it's, it's really just about availability. I would prefer to rent a space. Mm -hmm. We're actually been looking around Atlanta. Um, I'm actually an IT company that specializes in security and management. Um, and we've been looking around Atlanta for an actual space. Okay. Um, the best option for you, particularly since you haven't uh, been to the space before, I'm assuming, is to do a tour. That way you okay. get a better idea of what's available and then find out what's the best option for you. Okay. You can schedule those on the Pittsburgh Yards uh, uh, website, uh, Pittsburgh Yards slash events. You'll see the calendar where all of the available dates for those are, and those are held on Thursdays. And okay. If, and if those days that you see available uh, don't work for you, just shoot me an email. I just put my email contact information in the chat. And we can work on that. Okay. No, that sounds that sounds perfect. Right. I can actually um, take care of that. Any other questions? Hey, hey, Walter, my name is Julian. Uh, I actually have a question. It's, it's not really, I guess it's kind of a collaboration question. So I had the honor of uh, touring the Pittsburgh Yards in mid-July. Uh, the guys over there at uh, Core Venture Studios, James Harris, gave okay. us a personal tour. Mm -hmm. So I, I, was, I was blown away. And I live in Lakewood Heights, which is like right around a corner from the Pittsburgh Yards. I literally live like five minutes away. Okay. And I was inquiring at the time, I'm a public speaking coach, and I realized that a lot of entrepreneurs there who could use, you know, help with getting their message out there or getting that confidence. And I was wondering if there were any collaboration opportunities where any openings for just helping people around with their public speaking skills. I, I don't know how that process goes. I've looked on the Pittsburgh Yards website, didn't see any open employment opportunities. What's that process like? Who would I reach out to? 
if you can answer that. You can reach out to myself or you can reach out to Michelle. So we don't necessarily have that as a, a job opening per se, if I'm thinking that's what you're alluding to. But we definitely would, would like to leverage your talent and your skill set as either a seminar, webinar, and I guess right now kind of a, a virtual webinar in the building as a, a, a service that we would like to provide um, to our tenants as well as to the community as a whole. So we do have two conference rooms in the building that can be leveraged for that type of event as well as the main area of the NIA building that could be used for that type of uh, event as well. Right now, probably the, the main area or the conference rooms, depending upon um, where things go with the pandemic, we probably couldn't do it now. But as things uh, move along, that will be something that we definitely would like to have on site. And then right now, you know, in a, in a more virtual sense would be awesome to have. And that would fall in line with uh, Ms. Michelle Jones, which will be um, involved with events and planning for um, projects like that on site. So yes, we, we would definitely love to have that. Okay, yeah, just, and it, I'm not even looking for a paid opportunity, just here to provide value however I can. So I can, I'll reach out to you and Michelle as well. Uh, is it like an email or could you put your email in the chat? And I, could just I did, I put okay, it in the chat and if you don't, uh, if you don't see it, I could put it in there again. Okay, cool, cool, I appreciate you and I look forward to it, thank you. No problem. And if anyone else wants to volunteer any professional services, I mean, that's definitely one of the attributes that we want to have as Pittsburgh Yards is providing services to small business entrepreneurs to provide that leg up and that skill set to what you were saying, Julian. I mean, that's, that's definitely what Pittsburgh Yards is supposed to be providing to the community as well as to the tenants. Any other questions, concerns, or complaints for that matter? <laughs> Well, let me hurry up and, and end the call before I get a complaint. But uh, other than that, uh, we will end the meeting and hopefully everyone um, um, enjoyed the meeting as well as found, find it, found it informative. Um, I did put my email contact information in the chat. So for those of you that have not uh, visited Pittsburgh Yards or need more information, definitely reach out to me um, directly. And other than that, um, we'll see you when you tour Pittsburgh Yards. Have a good evening, y'all.